Today we're going to be talking about Strecker synthesis of amino acids. Uh, Adolf Strecker was a German chemist who designed this synthesis in late 1800s. And his original synthesis, which is displayed right here, uh, involved uh, acid aldehyde. He reacted it with first ammonia, then hydrogen cyanide, followed by acidic hydrolysis at elevated temperature, and he obtained alanine. And what's important to note here is that he obtained the racemic mixture of alanine. Now, uh, you can think of amino acids as a molecule that consists of three building blocks. And uh, I will now uh, color code them for you so that we can see where each part of the molecule is coming from. So, there is an amine group right here, which we will draw in red. There is also the carboxyl group, which we will draw in blue, right here. And there is also carbon that is in the middle and that also contains the side chain of the amino acid. So it's this carbon right here, right? I will just draw this in green. And then the side chain, which in, in our case here, in this example, is methyl group. So now, let's see where all of these building blocks are coming from. So the green building block, the carbon with the side chain, let's draw that bond as well, comes from our acid aldehyde that we started with. It's this methyl group right here. and this carbon. Now, where do we obtain amino group from? The amino group comes from ammonia, which is right here, NH3. And so we'll coat it with red. And then the carboxyl group, which is blue, comes from hydrogen cyanide. Or I should say this, the carbon from the carboxyl group comes from the hydrogen cyanide. And the OHs come from acidic hydrolysis. So we will draw this water also in blue. So next, I would like to show you the mechanism of Strecker synthesis. So we will start out by um, nucleophilic attack of ammonia, with this lone pair on nitrogen, onto the carbonyl carbon of acid aldehyde. And then these electrons will be pushed onto oxygen and we obtain the following reaction intermediate. So now oxygen has negative charge, and we now have carbon-nitrogen bond, and then nitrogen carries a positive charge. So what will happen next is called proton transfer. So um, we are in aqueous media, there's plenty of water around, and there's lots of protons floating around. And some of the protons of ammonia will probably get transferred to this oxygen atom. And so now we obtain the new reaction intermediate, which looks like this. So now the oxygen will be protonated, and it will carry a positive charge whereas ammonia will lose two of its protons and will carry a negative charge. So what will happen next is that these electrons on nitrogen will be pushed onto here to form a new carbon-nitrogen bond. And now our oxygen turned into water, which is a good leaving group, and so then the water will just leave. And now, so we got rid of water, so we'll say minus H2O. And we formed a new molecule that looks like this. Which now has carbon-nitrogen double bond. And this molecule is called imine. And uh, the uh, main feature of this molecule is this carbon-nitrogen double bond. And basically, it's you can say it's synthetically equivalent to carbonyl. It will undergo the same reactions as carbonyl does, so it will be just as susceptible to the attack of the nucleophile 
which we will see in the next step. So the next step of the synthesis is the nucleophilic addition of hydrogen cyanide. Now, you can think of hydrogen cyanide as just the source of this uh, cyanoanion, and so uh, it's characterized by this carbon-nitrogen triple bond, and so then it will just um, do a nucleophilic attack on this imine carbon, pushing these electrons onto nitrogen. So now we have the new intermediate where we now form the new carbon-carbon bond. And now this carbon has three bonds to nitrogen. And we also now have this nitrogen that carries negative charge. So now, in the next step, there will be protonation of this nitrogen, and we will obtain the following product. So now, if you look at this molecule and uh, compare it to the product that we're trying to get, we already have most of the building blocks in place. We have the amino group right here. We have the carbon and the side chain right here. And we also have the carbon that will eventually be a carboxyl group. But now all we have to do is hydrolyze this nitrile to convert this into a carboxyl group, and we have our product. So Next, we will see the hydrolysis of the nitrile group. So, um, the thing to remember about uh, cyano group, also known as nitrile group, is that it's synthetically equivalent to carboxylic acid. Now, you, you may notice that this carbon has three bonds to nitrogen. Atoms other than carbon and hydrogens are known as heteroatoms. So, examples of heteroatoms would be nitrogen or oxygen. So in this case, carbon has three bonds to heteroatoms, heteroatom, in this case, nitrogen. Now, in carboxylic acid, the carbon is bound to two oxygens. It has a single bond to an oxygen and two bonds to another oxygen. So that carbon also has a total of three bonds to the heteroatom. So in terms of the oxidation state, the carbon in the cyano group is equivalent to the carbon in the carboxylic acid group. And that's why it is so easy to convert nitrile group or cyano group into carboxyl group. And this is accomplished by hydrolysis. So in this case, the molecule of water will act as a nucleophile. And the lone pair in oxygen will attack this carbon in a nucleophilic fashion placing these electrons onto this nitrogen. So our new reaction intermediate looks like this. So this part of the molecule is still the same, nothing changed here. But then here now we have carbon that has two bonds to nitrogen instead of three, negative charge on the nitrogen. And it also has a molecule of water bond to it. And this oxygen has a positive charge. So now we will again observe proton transfer, in which case we will ob obtain the following intermediate. So we draw the amine group again, just like we did before. So now here we have carbon bound to hydroxyl group and double bond to nitrogen with a proton now. So this molecule is again synthetically equivalent to carboxylic acid, three bonds to the heteroatom. So now another molecule of water can do a nucleophilic attack on the same carbon right here in this fashion. So now let's see what kind of intermediate we'll, we'll obtain in this case. So it will look like this. Then hydrogen here. So here we will draw the hydroxyl group on this side, water molecule on this side, and it carries a positive charge on the oxygen. And now here we have nitrogen with a proton here and a negative charge over here. So now 
it will, we will again observe a few proton transfers. And at the end, eventually, what will happen is this. We'll obtain the following molecule. where now one of the carbons, uh, the carbon carries the hydroxyl group, but one of the hydroxyl groups gets deprotonated. And the nitrogen picks up two more protons and a positive charge. So now what happened is that we have ammonia here, which is a very good leaving group. And so now these electrons on the hydroxyl group can come down here to form a new bond, and then the ammonia will be kicked out. So we got rid of ammonia, and let's see what we get at the end. So we have So now it looks like an amino acid. Let's see if all the building blocks are present here. So we have an amino group right here, a carboxyl group right here, and a side chain, in this case it's methyl group, to obtain alanine.